Stayallday.com. You're now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. This is the go-getter energy that moves you, me, and anyone else out there to go make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. We put all this together in one package, one philosophy, one method, one mindset, one book, one show. What you get is work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. Today's topic, people are offended by something that you said something that you did something that you represent they're offended by something about you you don't even know what it is so what that's the topic if people are offended so what today what you're gonna what we're gonna talk about is you not being so antsy about the fact that people disagree with you with your opinion with uh, something that you produced something that you said something that uh, with which you have been associated and you don't even know you've been associated with it someone's offended so what even if someone is vehemently disagreeing with you meaning they're angry with you they hate you they they are protesting against you they are marching against you they created a hashtag to cancel you so what when you have and i'm saying this so what when you have a point of view that other people are not feeling if you're not you haven't done anything to hurt anyone you haven't done anything to attack anyone you haven't been malicious you feel whatever you've done was not a mistake you are firm on what you stand on and what you believe or what you said or what you put out there what you wrote whatever it happens to be and people are just disagreeing with you they just have a different perspective from you but neither of you is breaking a law or hurting anyone else so what that they're offended all right, that's today's topic. What we're talking about here today builds on a couple of episodes I want to refer you back to. Episode number 1230, why you avoid uncomfortable conversation. And also episode 1265, what you learn through conflict. Now, those are just two of the reasons. Those are just two episodes that come out in the last hundred. All right. Now, since I've told you those are episodes 1230 and 1265, there are another thousand before that where I've talked about this interpersonal relationships, talked about conflict, talked about dealing with any type of negative energy coming from the outside or even coming from within because when people are disagreeing with you if enough of them disagree with you and depending on your state your mental state where you were before that happened or while it's happening you may start to have some internal conflict you may start to wonder hey maybe i am wrong (laughs) maybe i shouldn't have done this maybe i did have the wrong opinion maybe i am the wrong person maybe i am in the wrong place i've talked about this in probably about 50 different episodes from different angles so if you are a member of the game group which i have no idea why you're not if you aren't because i'm giving you a free two-week trial just go to work on my game.com slash game group or the link that is in the description to wherever you are listening to this and get yourself in the game group start your two-week trial so you get episode access to all those episodes that i have referred to and a whole bunch that i didn't refer to that you have immediate access to understand that tiptoeing through life while trying to avoid pissing people off all right this is impossible to do while making an impact at the same time let's say that once more and explain it tiptoeing through life while seeking to avoid pissing anyone off is impossible to do while making an impact at the same time now you can tiptoe through life and not piss anyone off but you won't make any impact and you can make a whole bunch of impact and piss a whole bunch of people off you can choose to do one or the other or you can make a little bit of impact to piss a few people off you make a lot of impact and piss a whole lot of people off you can find some balance between them but you cannot do one if you tiptoe through life and avoid pissing anyone off there will be no impact whatsoever all right so if you go too far in either one of these directions understand that there's going to be an equal and opposite reaction to that or no action whatsoever if you're tiptoeing through life trying to do absolutely nothing when you're making an impact understand you're bringing something to the table that didn't already exist in some way shape or form that was not there before and therefore you're disturbing people's inertia you're disturbing the status quo and when you disturb people's status quo they get very uncomfortable when people's uncomfortable when people's comfort is disturbed when people's status quo is disturbed they will push back to keep the status quo as is 
in doing so and since we're in these diplomatic times usually they're not going to come at you with with swashbuckles and swords and guns they're going to come at you with words they're going to come at you with hashtags they're going to come at you with nasty emails they're going to come at you with dirty looks they're going to come at you by ganging up on you trying to to apply social pressure to you this is the way that people fight back when their status quo has been disturbed i'm sure you've seen this in many forms over the last few years in this world in the since the inception of social media so let's just say over the last decade or so this is what people do when their status quo is disrupted doesn't necessarily mean that they're wrong does definitely does not necessarily mean that they're right but this is what's going to happen when you're making an impact if you are not disturbing people's status quo if you're not disturbing what they have already been used to you are not making an impact you can add to what already exists and you'll be fine and you'll be a nice person and people will say isn't she lovely or isn't he nice and they'll appreciate you but if you want to make a true impact you have to bring something that is not there you have to disturb something that already exists if you are willing to do that you will piss people off people will be offended and people will let you know about it and today's topic is when that happens so what point number one if no one disagrees with you or no one ever takes offense to your ways your methods your positions your whatever you're not doing anything let me say that once more if no one ever disagrees with you no one ever takes offense to the way that you are operating if no one ever pushes back against your ideas your initiatives your no, anything that you're doing if no one ever pushes back against it no one ever dislikes it no one ever gives you a dirty look you know, sends you a nasty email or sends you a, a threatening dm about something that you said did represent whatever that means you're not doing anything that's what it means all right so i want you to check your inbox all right check your comments section check your direct messages check your whatever way people communicate with you if nobody seems to be pissed off with the way you're doing things it's because you're doing nothing all right you are blending into the crowd you are part of the wallpaper meaning you're just adding into what already existed doesn't mean you're a bad person it just means you're not doing anything that's making an impact all right you are just continuing what already existed all right you are just more of the same that's what you are and that's all right. If you want to be more of the same, that's fine. I'm not sure how much anything that I talk about here today or here on this show, period, is really going to help you. But if you want to continue listening, listen, be my guest. But I would just want you to understand that you're not the target audience for the show. I'm just just so we're clear. But if you want to stay, you're welcome to do so. All right, but if you take a new job, for example, and nobody disagrees with your new initiatives, the ideas that you bring to the table, the 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 questions that you ask in the meetings, the suggestions that you bring to the, the boardroom at your new job. Listen, why they hire you? If you get hired for a job and you're not bringing anything to the table that disturbs what was already there, if you're not disturbing the status quo with what you bring to the table, why did they hire you for the job? What do they need you for? They could have kept the last guy there all right, and probably paid him. Well, they might have been paying him more, but they could have kept him there. They wouldn't have had to go through the whole the whole you no. Know, the whole ordeal of bringing a new person in they got to train you they got to get you initiated they got to have you sign paperwork they got to go through all the interviews it takes a lot of time to hire a new person at a job why they hire you if all you're going to do is give them more of what they already had they could have kept the old guy got the exact same results they were getting with them when people's beliefs and ideas are challenged as i told you they will take offense to any hint of change most people there are a few people, few of us out there who are very adaptable to change and we adapt to change very quickly. But there's a very small percentage of people. And I have an episode coming up soon, probably in the next week or so. Where I'm going to be talk talking about adapting to change quickly in life, even the change that you do not expect. And most of the change that we need to adapt to quickly is the change that we didn't want. All right. The changes that we want, we, we adapt to them because we were already mentally prepared. But I'm talking about the ones that come that we didn't know were coming. You got to be able to adapt to those quickly. We're going to talk about that in the future. But back to this topic. If your concepts and your materials aren't causing feelings and reactions that cause people to push back against you in some negative way, because that's usually the first people's first reaction to any type of change. They try to push back against it when they realize that pushing back is not going to stop it. Then they use anger because that's the, the next level of defense for people to show you that they don't like it, that they don't accept it, that they don't accept you, that they are upset with whatever you're bringing to the table in hopes of the reason why people do this. This is an unconscious way of trying to control you. When people show you anger, they are trying to control you. They're trying to use that anger as an unconscious threat 
to stop you from doing whatever you were doing that caused them that provoked this anger from them to hopefully go back to what you were doing so everything stays the same that's the reason why people use anger it is not because they really need to do that to people it's just a me it's just a a method of control if pushing back doesn't work the nice way of pushing back doesn't work then they try the the night night the not nice way which is anger and then the next level again back in the way way back in the day used to be you know fist and fighting and all that stuff but again we're in such a, a diplomatic society now where that's frowned upon most of the time now people try to attack you with they try to socially attack you try to ostracize you in some way shape or form and the less susceptible you are to that the less it works against you and the more susceptible you are to it the usually the less impact you make because as soon as somebody pushes back against you you go scurrying back to your your rabbit hole wherever you were but again that's a different topic for a different day that we've already talked about and i'll probably talk about again from a different angle in the future but if your concepts are not causing feelings and reactions of pushback from people you are basically wallpaper now you know what wallpaper is it means you're nobody even notices you all right you're blending in and taking up space for no reason all right, that's that's basically what it means you are taking up space but you're not bringing anything to the table again if you are a person who is going to continue what's already been going on you're going to maintain the status quo this is not a <clears throat> excuse me not a condemnation of you i'm not telling you you are a bad person or that you are wrong what i'm telling you is what we talk about here work on your game is not for you all right i do not make content i do not talk when i'm writing out these topics and thinking of what i'm going to talk about and writing my emails and my blogs and my books i'm not writing them for people who want to continue what's already going on I'm writing them for and creating them and talking about them for people who wish to make an impact and do something different from what already exists so if you're not one of those people understand that i am not talking to you you are free to listen but i'm not talking to you so if you don't get something that i say that's why because uh, you're not supposed to get it because i'm not speaking your language but understand that if you are blending into the wallpaper taking up space for no reason get the hell out the way you're in the way you are blocking someone who's actually going to make an impact by you know, you're taking up oxygen you're taking up space you're taking up a salary you're taking up an office you're taking up a desk you're taking up a i don't know whatever else you could be taking up that somebody else who's actually going to make an impact is using you are in the way move out of the way point number two today's topic is if people are offended so what Point number two, as long as you are not impinging on anyone's civil rights, you're not breaking anyone, you're not breaking any laws, you're not invading anyone's personal space, you know, you're not robbing or stealing from anyone, you're not killing anybody, you're not uh, you're not doing anything that would get you in trouble with the law. Understand that people will just have to be offended. All right, that's just what it is. Sometimes people will be offended by what you bring to the table. You do not need to appease them. You do not need to try to ameliorate the situation. You do not need to come to a compromise. You do not, necess not necessarily do any of these things. You do not need to find a, a, a balance. You do not to need to, I guess we could call it agreeing to disagree. You don't even need to do that if you don't want to. You don't have to agree with them at all. They could just be offended and not like you and talk shit about you every day. And every time your name comes up, say something about you. They can do that. All right. And that's just OK. It's OK to keep things just like that. These days, I see that at least from what I see again, I don't know everybody in the world. I don't see every interaction that's taking place. But a lot of what I see these days is whenever there is some type of conflict between people. Very rarely do I see anyone who's OK with it being, you know what? OK, you don't like me. You're not feeling me. You disagree with this thing that I said or this thing that I represent or this thing that you're pinning on me. And you know what? Fuck it. All right. You just disagree. So what? And just keep walking very rarely do i see anybody do that nowadays it's it has to be this people want to again it's, it's a very diplomatic times people want to collaborate everybody wants to be friendly every every conflict needs to be squashed and worked out and everyone wants to appear to like each other when a lot of it's not true a lot of it's bullshit a lot of people who appear to like other people don't actually like them a lot of people who pretend to like you don't like you and a lot of people you pretend to like you don't actually like them let's keep it real how many people do you pretend to like every single day who you don't like how many people at your job do you really don't like but you got to pretend to like them now, how many people at your job don't like you and you know they don't like you but they got to pretend like they like you because your co-workers or because you work for them or because they work for you or because you know it's tied to their paycheck so they got to pretend to like you or because they are part of this society and this is just this is just the thing that's enveloped our society for the most part 99 percent of people and they just got to pretend to like other people that they don't really like because you know just what it is what what did drake say in that song he said girls asking me for the for the code for the wi-fi so they could talk about their timeline and tell me they tell me about their friends just to tell me they ain't really friends all right so you know there are some people in your life who you don't like but you pretend to like and people who in your life who don't like you but they pretend to like you 
why because it's just the world that we're in right now eventually that will change i say over the next 10 to 15 years it'll change it'll be a new wave a new generation of people will come in they'll push back against this this buddy buddy thing that we got going on in the world now at least in some parts of the world and it's going to change it's going to be all right so what you don't like me you're not feeling me fine it costs you nothing pay me no mind that's quote quote from jay-z people will just have to be offended they will get over it when people are offended by something you said did or represent here's the one thing i guarantee you they will get over it they will eventually stop talking about it they will eventually let it go they will eventually accept that you're not changing that you are not trying to appease them that you are not trying to make amends that you're not trying to meet in the middle and it is going to accept that it is what it is that's what is going to happen most of the time Episode number 1232, I talked about what you can learn from President Donald Trump, who is, at least as of this, the date of this recording, still the President of the United States of America. He embodies this. He's a great example. One of the things that I talked about in that episode 1232, and those of you who are, uh, I don't know, never Trumpers, or you hate Trump, or you just vehemently uh, disagree with the fact that I'm even mentioning the man's name, you need to listen to episode 1232 because you're the specific person I made it for. One of the main things that he embodies and the reason why I talked about him in this episode has nothing to do with his presidential policies or anything he's done with any other country or anything he's done really since being office being in office as far as politics because I don't pay much attention to politics at all. It is episode is not about politics. It's really about what he represents, what he appears to represent to me mentally, just the way that he approaches life and the fact that he's he represented some things plural that had a whole lot of people vehemently disagreeing with him and what i admired about him that i think a lot of people can learn from is that he simply did not and does not and probably will not give a damn about the people who disagree now while you may not agree with the fact that he doesn't care about people disagreeing with certain things there are certain things that you may disagree with trump about that you just can't accept a person not caring Or the fact that because he's in the position that he's in, being the president of the United States, you can't accept that he doesn't care about those specific topics or the fact that he was running for the office that he was running for. It had the people paying attention to him. They had people paying attention to him. And he has the, um, of course, a whole lot of young people maybe following his lead because he is the president of the United States. You may say, I get it, Dre, if he was, you know, some small town mayor or some city councilman or some podcaster or YouTuber talking about what he was talking about and didn't give a damn. I would get it. But as president, I can't accept him not getting it. I get that you feel that way. At the same time, the reason why I used him as an example is because everybody knows who he is and everybody can relate to the example that I give. So when I give an example of a basketball player, some of you may not know who I'm talking about or I talk about my own life. You may not have seen it. You got to go off my description or I talk about some rapper and you don't listen to rap music. You might not get it. But if I talk about Donald Trump, everybody gets it. So he's a great litmus no, that's not the best word he's a great example let's just say to use for this and i believe he embodies this maybe better than any famous person i've ever seen remember when trump was running for president and a bunch of people were saying no if he wins i'm gonna move to canada uh, how'd that turn out who, who actually moved to canada I don't know of anyone. I heard a lot of people saying that. And some people were saying is that they really meant it. I don't think anybody actually did it. Now, you have a right to feel how you feel on whatever subject with whatever person. And if you believe there are people out there. But this is the thing. However you feel is how you feel about any subject. We're not talking about Trump right now. And if you believe there are people out there whom you have been called on to serve, meaning there's an audience of people out there who need to hear what you have to bring to the table understand that it is your duty to get your message to those people and in the process of getting your message to those people that means you may have to step over the dead bodies of some people who are offended by your position are you willing to do that that's an open question that you must answer to get to let me say it another time another way and another time in another way there's a certain audience of people out there. It might be 100 people, it might be 100,000, it might be a million, it might be five people who are out there in the world right now who need to hear a certain message specifically coming from you because they can only get it from you because of your experience, your background, your delivery, who you are, you know where you're from. They need to hear it specifically from you. You're not the first person to ever say it, but you're the first person to say it the way that you're going to say it and only you can say it in your way. There are people out there who need it. And if they don't get it from you, they'll never get it. In order for you to get that message to those people, 
there are some people who will be offended by your message. There's some people who will be offended by your delivery, by your position, by what you're representing, by what you have chosen to uh, connect yourself to. There's some people who will not like it. In order to get your message to those people, though, that you've been called on, you're going to have to step over the dead bodies of those people who disagree with you. My question is, are you willing to do that? You must be willing to do that in order to get to where you need to get to and make the impact that you've been called on to make. And the people who are truly, really offended by what you're offering, by what you're representing, by what you're saying, people who are really offended. I'm not talking about quasi offended or pretending to be offended. I'm not talking about Facebook offended. I'm talking about real life offended by what you're bringing to the table. All right. They will eventually fade away and find something else to pay attention to because they will finally they will eventually realize, OK, being offended by this person and letting them know isn't going to change anything. So let me go find something else to put my energy to that's actually going to give me some ROI. All right. Because all of us humans, we're not stupid. OK, nobody's going to keep doing something for nothing. Nobody gives something for nothing. When you see people being offended about something, usually it's because they know they're going to get some kind of reaction or response. If I go on on Twitter and I complain to AT&T about their shitty Wi-Fi service, which I talked about uh, several episodes back, I'm not doing it because I just want to vent to the world and let everybody know that I hated AT&T services because I'm expecting AT&T to reply to me and fix the problem, which they do. If they stop replying and they never replied to anything that I said, I will eventually stop tweeting them. All right, I'm only going to send a message out. I'm only going to give energy to something that's going to give me energy back. Even if it's negative energy, All right, that's the, this is the way that it works. So you go on social media and you see people leaving negative comments. It's not because necessarily they feel that negatively, because we all know we put sauce on things. We put a little bit of extra energy on things online just to get attention, just to get a reaction. We all do it because the internet is basically the new TV. So think of anything you see on the internet as a television show. Don't think it as, don't take everything literally. Take it as a TV show. Same way people on TV will sensationalize a topic just to get a reaction, just to get an audience to pay attention to it. It's the same thing we all do. Because the more sensational we make it, the higher the chance we're going to get a response. And the more responses we get, and the more responses we get, the more the, the dopamine hits that we get from the fact that we do this. So I'm, I'm getting a little bit clinical on you, but you understand what I'm saying. Hopefully you do. If you don't, rewind this and listen to it again. Use a dictionary. Understand that people will eventually fade away and stop paying attention to anything you're bringing to anything that they're bringing to the table if they're not getting a response. So if you show that. You don't give a damn about them being offended. They'll stop being offended simply because there's no ROI in their offense. There's nothing to get from it. OK, go look on Facebook and you'll see exactly what I mean. When the people who are always finding something to be offended about and write, writing these five paragraph long diatribes about something that pissed them off, somebody who cut them off in traffic or something has happened over the last five years. They want to make sure everybody knows about it. They're only doing that because of the comments that come down below. All right. If there are no comments below. I guarantee you they'll stop posting All right, because there's no energy return. Point number three today's topic is if people are offended so what point number three and this goes right into the point that i was just making at the end of point number two being offended these days is like the new ice bucket challenge i right, remember the ice bucket challenge from five years ago when people were ducking dumping or they would get someone to dump a bucket of ice cold water on their heads for i don't even remember what it was for i don't even remember why that i believe it was als i believe it was to fight against als but the thing is that the ice bucket challenge did produce a whole lot of money for als uh research and you no know, fixing the what is it? it curing the disease but a lot of the ice bucket challenge is really just about seeing who was going to do it and what creative ways people could come up with and how people reacted to getting buckets of ice dumped on their head. That was really the most interesting, interesting thing about the ice bucket challenge to the point that people were doing it just so they could dump the ice on their heads. It wasn't even about the disease that was trying to be fought and being offended these days. That's a new ice bucket challenge. People are finding new reasons and new ways of being offended and new methods of letting the world know how offended they are because it's just a cool thing to do because that's what everybody else is doing and human beings. We are by nature followers. So we see other people doing monkey see monkey do. That's exactly what it is. Being offended is a new way to show a part of something. It's a new way to be a part of something. That's what it is. Rarely is people are people's offenses, at least the ones that they express vehemently, rarely is an expression of their real true beliefs. Because as I said, on the internet, we sensationalize because the internet is television. Beliefs, ladies and gentlemen, you know what beliefs are followed by? actions if you want to know if someone really believes something not only will they talk about it but you'll see subsequent action that matches what they talk about not a tweet not a caption not a comment 
I want you to remember that. Next time you hear somebody talking something that uh, shocks you, something that surprises you, something that uh, worries you or concerns you on the Internet, uh, ask yourself, has this person taken an action that mirrors those words? If you can't find that action, let me tell you something. You're not looking at a true belief. You're just looking at somebody venting, someone looking for attention. And, you know, they probably got it from you. I remember this. I was on social media early this at the beginning of the NBA season a couple months ago. And I saw a guy who I, I just saw his tweet. He was announcing that he was no longer supporting a certain basketball team, an NBA team, because he didn't like what one of the owners from that team said about a, this owner for whatever reason, was talking about some political situation. And this guy didn't like what the owner said about the situation. And the guy said, I've been supporting this team for X number of years, but I'm no longer supporting this team because the owner of the team said this. Not even six weeks went by and the same guy who said he was never supporting that team again. He was at the game of that team posting pictures from his seats, letting everybody know that he was at the game. And I remember thinking to myself, the last time I heard this dude mention this team, he was talking about he would never support them again. Now he, here he is spending money and posting pictures to tell everybody that he's at the game supporting this team. And what this meant to me, it just drove home the point that I just made to you. Being offended is a sport these days. All right, it's a hobby. All right, it's a leisure activity. All right, it's something that we do for fun. All right, the same way I might go play a game of ping pong for fun. It doesn't mean I'm trying to become a professional ping pong player. It's because it's just something I could do for fun right now to let some energy off, let some steam off. I don't really believe that I could become a professional table tennis player. All right, the same way somebody gets offended by something on Twitter or on Facebook or Instagram or in a YouTube comment, they may not really be offended. Again, show me the action that they took that shows they're really offended. Right, usually there is none. Because the ice bucket challenge, right? you might dump a bucket of ice over your head. That doesn't mean you're out there. You're not out there you know, doing research. You're not in the library doing research on fighting any diseases. You might not even remember the name of the disease that the ice bucket challenge is for, but you dumped a bucket of ice on your head, right? All right? Because that's what everybody else was doing. This is the world that we're in. Human beings are followers. I always remember that. When you see a crowd of people all doing the same thing, even if it happens to be against you, don't take it personal. Don't think that they're all actually against you. All they are doing is following the crowd because this is what people do. Getting upset and expressing it usually is not what somebody truly feels. It's just what sells to an audience. And as I said, the Internet is a television show. All right, and you want to get ratings for your TV show? That means people got to be watching. And you want to get people to watch? You got to be more sensational than whatever is on the next TV station. If something on the next station is more sensational than what's on your station, even if your material is better, nobody's going to watch your show. All right, that's what the internet is. Always just keep this in mind at all times when you see something sensational online. It's how you endear yourself to friends and followers is to do what everybody else is doing. You want people to like you. All you got to do is see what they're doing and show that, give them a reason to believe that you believe the same thing that they believe all right, and they'll like you. Why? Because they'll look at you and say, oh, you're just like me. That's the way it works. Most of it is a show. Remember that when you when you log on to the internet and open up any one of these social media apps, you are watching TV. All right? You are not looking at what people really think. You are watching people's representation of what they think you like. Let's recap today's topic. If people are offended, so what today is not about today is about not being so antsy when people disagree with you attack you team up on you start a cancel hashtag about you even vehemently when you have a point of view that they're just not feeling refer yourself back to episodes number 1230 and 1265 about conflict between people people tiptoeing through life trying to avoid pissing anyone off that is impossible to do while making an impact at the same time pick one point number one if no one disagrees with you or takes offense to your ways because you're not doing anything if you work at it, if you took a job at a new place and nobody disagrees with the initiatives and ideas you bring to the table, why did they hire you? All you are doing is doing more of the same. There's nothing wrong with doing more of the same, but I do not make content for people who want to do more of the same. You are probably listening to the wrong show. When people's ideas and beliefs are challenged, they will take offense to any hint of change and they will push back. If your concepts and materials are not causing pushback, you are wallpaper. You are blending in and taking up space. Get the hell out of the way. Point number two, as long as you are not impinging on anyone's civil rights or breaking any laws, listen, people just have to be offended. Episode 1232, one of the things I told you about Donald Trump, he does not mind people being offended by him. And I understand that you may think that it goes a level deeper than that. It's not that simple. I get it. But at the same time, I really don't care <laughs> because... I'm not Donald Trump, and whether you disagree with him or not is not my argument to fight. It's not my battle to fight. 
The point that I made about the guy is that he offended a whole lot of people, has a whole lot of people who still don't like him, millions of people who don't like him, and it appears that he really does not give a damn. And while you may not think that that's such a, a virtuous trait, I guarantee you that damn near all of us can learn a lot just from that example if we took trump's name out of it and just use the example that i just gave just take everything that has happened the fact that he has millions of people going against him because they don't like what he represents and he doesn't give a damn and he keeps on doing what he's going to do a lot of people can learn a whole lot from that in my opinion and this is my show and everything you're getting is my opinion not everything i'm giving you some facts and truths too but also a whole lot of my opinions because it's the work on your game show if you have a message that you believe you need to get out there to a whole lot of people it is your duty to get that message out to those people and if that means you must step over the dead bodies of people who disagree with your message so be it those who are truly offended they'll find something else to pay attention to when they realize that you're not paying any attention to them point number three being offended is a new ice bucket challenge especially on the internet it is a way to show that you're a part of something it is rarely an expression of people's true beliefs because true beliefs are followed by actions not tweets not captions not comments i saw a guy say i'll never support this basketball team again six weeks later he was at the game paying for, paying money to sit in the seats paying money for the food paying money in the parking garage posting pictures on social media that he was at the game supporting the team i thought you wasn't supporting the team anymore all right didn't take him but six weeks to change that idea it was never an idea in the first place People doing what everybody else is doing does not mean everybody is against you, does not mean everybody really feels that way. It means people are human, people are social creatures, people are followers, they do what everybody else is doing because this is the way that we endear ourselves to other people. Look at your friends, look at your closest associates. You probably have a lot of things in common or at least you pretend to. <laughs> That's a different topic we'll talk about it on a different day. This is how we make friends. We show that we believe the same things that they believe even when we don't actually believe them. Why? Because this is how we connect with other people and human beings are social creatures. Monkey see, monkey do. Human beings are followers. What you see on the internet is a show when people are acting as if they are offended by something. If they're really offended, there will be actions that follow. If it's just words, all they're doing is putting on a show. The internet is a show. The computer is a new television. Remember that you're watching TV. Work on your game. Dre all day.